Well, good evening, ladies, lasses, and lasses. Welcome to the click. You smell astounding today, and don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. What are these? You might ask. Yes, indeed, we have baby plushy keychains coming out most likely in September. So keep an eye out. They're gonna be so freaking cute. Look at this. Look at this size comparison, please. Look how tiny and baby it is. It's so cute. Oh, I'm gonna buy so many for myself. Anyway, today we're gonna do something dandy, fine, delicious. We're gonna look into r slash D&D memes. And I am so looking forward to this. Enjoy. Mwah. Oh, by the way, before we start, should I just make you, like, just a little bit jealous? I have dice with tiny, tiny ducks inside of them. Look at this. Oh, look at that little duck inside my D20. It's a little baby duck. <gasps> it's so cute. Oh my god. I am the most superior D&D player ever. <sighs> Let's get on with the video, shall we? Your druid is sneaking through the campsite, and a few soldiers start walking towards her general direction. Uh, I turn into a tree! The camp you're sneaking into is in the middle of an open field. Ah, sh uh, I'll turn into a tree anyway! Soldier, hey, has that tree always been there? Uh, I've been here for weeks! Roll to bluff. Huh, not 20! Well, the tree would know better than us, I suppose. <laughs> this is just my godforsaken parties in a nutshell. <laughs> Uh, I turned into a cactus. We're inside of a swamp. Uh, uh. <laughs> Genius. I also love how controversial Nat 20s are. If it's like an automatic win to whatever bullshit you try to pull, or if it's just like the best you could do realistically in the situation. I am very much leaning towards the one where it's just unrealistic as heck because it makes it so fun. Like this. I am a talking tree. Trust me, bro. I, I don't think I can take this anymore. It's like, it's like you're not even there. Please forgive me. I had a friend who was doing exactly this. He was building an entire homebrew program inside of MATLAB, which is like a programming language for engineering and stuff. It even had interfaces and buttons you could click for dice rolls and built-in weapons and stuff. It was absolutely amazing. Then it became kind of tricky to proceed during the game night because we all got increasingly drunk, but, uh, but that's beside the point. Okay, little one, you're on sapling duty today. You will help this tree grow. It will bear the most delicious fruit. And long after that, many years from now, when the tree has grown big and strong, I'll let you out from under there, and we'll have a nice little chat about what you did. I think that was my microphone doing a weird, like, <laughs> electronic scraping, but it was so perfect in timing for, like, the hold up. That's beautiful. I'm keeping that mic. You did a good reaction, boy. Crouches to go into stealth. The crackling of my knees alerts the guards. I am immediately killed. When you're a rogue in your 30s... Oh, isn't that just relatable? Uh, you're the most hated species in the game, no matter what class you choose. Uh, elves have many versatile roles. Yeah! Like hatred god! An idiot's guide to wear creatures. Wear bear, wear boar, wear rat, wear tiger, wear raven, jackal wear, wear wolf, under wear wolf, uh, and warehouse. I feel like this post belongs on a very questionable subreddit that I have never seen before in my life. Do not at me, thank you. When you've missed the last three sessions and sit down to play D&D &D again with your group while they're splitting up treasure, but no one's offering you any of it. Uh, oh, uh, so, so that's how it is. But you weren't there. You silly little rascal, oh my god! I think my favorite method for just making a bunch of money in D&D was opening pubs in every single town we went to, which just generated cash while we were all like offline, not gaming, and all the workers in the pubs were unpaid interns, let's say, so, so the, the profit margins were great. Anyway, next meme, please. The first example of adventurous privilege you learned about. Yeah, that's so weird, right? She just broke into their house and stole all their food, and we're like, oh my god, she's the protagonist? That's such BS. And we were taught to be on her side, like the bears were wrong for defending their home. Exactly! She's just a burglar! Which is like every D&D party in history. I just want to make a campaign that's inherently evil. I want to host that for my next thing. Oh my god, that's so good. That you like go to what you think is the king to like get your quest, but it turns out to be the evil warlock, but you don't know it. So all the quests you think you're doing the good deal, like, oh, saving the stuff. But in reality, you're just like a henchman to the evil lich overlord. I need to do this. And the twist in the end, I know my party would just go along with it. They wouldn't even be like upset about it. Oh my god, we were doing evil deeds this whole time. Ah, oh, who would have thunk it? Anyway, let's go get drunk. 
The ultimate in plagiarized homebrew and you know you want it. The fantasy world map, Kroll, Oz, Narnia, Middle Earth, Wonderland, Moon Valley, Fantasia, Hyrule, this has it, Westeros, this has everything. This is so amazing. I mean, I know my party would never explore it anyway. They would sit in a corner and God knows where and just get drunk and beat up villagers anyway. Warlocks that use packed rituals to speed date potential new patrons look something like... So basically, I'm an eldritch horror from the deep? That is so interesting. <laughs> Tell me more, please. <laughs> I can flirt with demons too. Hello there. How are you doing? Don't ignore me! God. Well, fellow gamers, let me know in the comments what your favorite class in D&D is. I have no class. I'm a goblin girl in a goblin world. Black apparel. I am feral. That's so beautiful. I love this. Oh, that's another D&D adventure idea, like American Idol, but D&D. That is so beautiful that all the characters have to go through it because, like, they're captured somewhere and they have no choice and everyone has to sing and it's, like, basically karaoke and everyone's gonna get super drunk. This is a good party starter. I love this. <laughs> party starter? That can mean two things. I love this. Conversations with a six-year-old DM. Six-year-old DM. With your ring of jumping, you soared 20 feet into the air but just missed the ladder. I will try something else. You take nine points of falling damage. But I'm wearing the ring of jumping. It isn't the ring of landing. Mm. I really hope the D&D movie ends with a smash cut to them around the table in real life, with someone saying, uh, right, so, uh, same time next week? They all agree, but then a couple of people say, uh, actually, I have a thing, and everyone groans. Boom, roll credits. Collect Oscar. It didn't. Sadly, as someone looking back in time at this point, but it was still a good movie. I enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought about the movie in the comments. My favorite was when the illusion spell wore off and <laughs> when they were trying to distract the guards with singing. <laughs> it's such silly humor, but I just love it. Or the fat dragon. I loved the fat dragon. I changed my mind. My favorite is fat dragon. I want a fat dragon. You know what? I'm gonna get a little ice block as well, because summer is typical, but it's just a little bit too warm in this room. Well, click, aren't you a fancy, famous YouTuber? Where's your AC? It's this. This is my AC. I remember a couple of summers ago when it was super hot and uh, I recorded none of my videos wearing pants. I was sitting on ice block in my undies, but no one knew because you can only see my torso on the camera. Anyway, let's read some more memes, shall we? Character concept. Barbarian who was not the chosen one and couldn't draw the sword from the stone. Instead, they just lift the whole thing and use it as a big hammer. I love this concept. This is so good and it basically means the weapon is indestructible as well. This is so good. Our dwarven engineers came up with a new armor design protecting against the typical injuries sustained by warriors returning from battle in the netherworld. So here you can see the typical injuries are on the limbs. Those are the only ones that made it back. So we designed this armor flawless. This is so good. So good. It's real statistics. It's based on actual thing. Survival bias. This is so good. This is the story why bikini armor exists. It's just really crappy medieval statisticians. <laughs> Oh my god, this is lore friendly. <laughs> I can't wait to have my super buff dragonborn fighter who is named Gandalf the Hard for no reason wear bikini armor for the rest of the campaign. Thank you. DM, because you offended her, the warlock's patron curses you. Ah, crap. From now on, you'll find steed and find greater steed spells only summon Lady Marshmallow. Uh, what? Casts find steed? Oh my god, that is beautiful. How is this a curse? This is a good thing. Wait a second, will this pet actually increase your resting bonus? So, you know, if you're just resting along the road on uneven ground, but you summon Steed and use this as a pillow, it still counts as a fluffy bed so you get a full rest and all your spells back? Is that a thing? Can I make this? I can make this argument. I can make this argument. The DM doesn't want you to know this, but the monster's weapons are free and you can take them home. I have 458 goblin simtars. This is just me in Skyrim, though. Oh my god, when you have been like, you have like a Falmer cave and you're so desperate to make cash. He just waddled back to Whiterun with 200 freaking Falmer swords. They're all worth like 8 gold each. <sighs> People struggle to get a full night's rest in a climate-controlled room, sleeping on a big, soft mattress. Players. Yeah, my character can totally go for a long rest while sleeping in the bog of eternal mosquitoes and uneven rocky ground. I get all my spell slots back, right? But that's where you have the summon steed. The big fluffy boy and you can sleep on top of big fluffy boy on full rest. You see, I cracked it. It's so good. We will help you find your character art, kid. We got Hero Forge Hank, AI Albert, and Tragic Tim. 
Well, what did Tragic Tim do? He paid for a commission and then his character died session one. Aw, oh, man, yeah, I feel that. I feel that. And you didn't remake a character and it dies 15 minutes later because you're still in an intense battle. <laughs> That's beautiful. Normal brain. Brain damage, dead. Superior brain, small. Brain can dodge, alive. Is this the whole idea behind barbarians? Like, rogues can dodge. Barbarians have brain dodge, so they never get concussions or brain sucked. I love this. A new hidden mechanic, brain dodge. The players. What in the fr- I didn't have a Kraken mini! <laughs> Fight this, everyone! Man, those cup really be sucking. Okay, stop. Katana or longsword? Spear. <laughs> Beautiful. Who here would want to play D&D with Henry Cavill? He's mine. He's mine. What's a good slur for people with two legs? Hey guys, in my next campaign I'm playing a racist centaur. Somehow all my characters end up racist, I don't know, I don't know. Hashtag what's up, front nuts. I had exactly this character a couple of months ago. I had a racist aristocrat centaur. Imagine like a centaur with a tailcoat and a musket and super snobby going around like, <laughs> Look at all you bipedal losers. <laughs> you have skin under your toes. <laughs> Who even has toes? I think the best one I came up with was two legs or two feet. You know, like four eyes for people with glasses, but it's like, Whoa, what up, two feet? <laughs> Disgusting. Rogue. Ah, oh, this fight isn't looking good. It's time for Operation Bag. Um, Operation Bag? Puts bag of holding up her boss's head while the paladin prepares smite. DM. Oh, oh no. Go on. According to the rules, when a bag of holding is ruptured or destroyed, it scatters its contents into the astral plane. Thanks to some dialogue previously, and the rogue and the paladin decided to try it while the boss's head was inside. Go on. I had the rogue make a grapple check against him and they managed to succeed. The paladin's turn was next, so they immediately went for thunderous smite on their warhammer attack, which they crit on. Everyone nearby got thrown back a number of feet from the rupture and when they came to, the boss was dead and headless. I love stuff like this about D&D, turning stuff that isn't supposed to be weapons into the most deadly weapons of all. And this boss fight was probably supposed to last a couple hours. It was over in three minutes. <laughs> I initially thought it was going to be the Skyrim thing where you just put something over someone's head to steal stuff, but no, they just teleport their head to the astral plane. It just occurred to me that Bingo Knight or Bridge Knight at a senior center will probably be the D&D Knight when we get there, and now I am ready to retire. Can I retire at 30? Thank you. You need a DC-15 to pass. My brother in Christ, I am literally climbing a rope. Oh yes indeed, but you're a very clumsy fella, aren't we? Oh, you rolled a one. I guess you accidentally put the entire rope in your butt. <laughs> Silly how things go. The 5e Dungeon Master's Guide is probably the most purchased yet not fully read book since the Bible. I think so too, yeah. I don't think I ever read the whole thing. Say person A pointed a gun at person B and pulled the trigger, but the gun jammed. Person A then gave a half-hearted apology. Should person B accept the apology? Should they trust person A ever again? What if person A starts visibly trying to clear the jam but assures person B that it is all fine, uh, asking for a friend? Isn't this just every D&D party when you roll a critical one and be like, Oh no, I did. I, I, I was aiming for the floor. I, didn't, I wasn't swinging at you. Never mind, let me just roll again real quick. <laughs> It depends on how high you roll persuasion, I suppose. Dungeons and Dragons, a game where a three-hour walk takes five minutes, but a five-minute battle takes three hours. Yeah, but it depends on how much stuff happens. It's like the density of happenings per time unit. That's what takes time. I suppose it goes the same thing with, like, reading books sometimes, you know? Some scenes in books take a long time to read because there's a lot of details and stuff going on. Food for thought. Today, nobody showed up for my 8.15 a.m. class. Zero students of about 40, sitting in an empty room. I emailed them, trying to disguise my hurt feelings. Two minutes later, I get a reply. Um, Professor, we think you might be in the wrong room. So anyway, off I go to live in a hole forever. My wife really wants me to mention that I was sleep deprived because I got up at 4 a.m. to play Dungeons and Dragons with my friends in Australia. <laughs> That is so beautiful, though. I hope you told the class the same thing. That will make you the most popular professor of this year, I promise. Kinda shocked more DMs don't ban centaurs since they get two extra feats at level one. That's not even the main problem. <laughs> yes, indeed, I'm a bit of a jester myself. <laughs> If you are buying gender-specific color clothing for an infant, please remember blue is spellcaster, green is druid, red is warrior, and yellow is cleric.
I love this though. This is so much more interesting than gender. Is that basically what it is? You have your race and your gender, which is just your class. <gasps> oh my god, have we just unlocked a whole new identity spectrum for D&D? Yes, indeed, we have. Get your duck dice today. I should sell these kind of things. I should sell like weird dice. Can I do that? Do I have a merch store that does that? I'd have to check this out. Want to play D&D in college and set up a club? Get advertised by the college. 80 people initially sign up? 80 people initially sign up? I think the best way to do this, what I have seen, I haven't attended it myself, but you have these large D&D parties sometimes when there's like one dude sitting on stage who's like the master DM who's telling the story and that kind of stuff, and then you have a bunch of individual tables that all have one DM and like five players that all go through the same adventure kind of and they make different decisions depending on the team. That's a really good way of doing it, and it's like a party that you can easily scale up or down depending on how many people actually show up. Um, you want to try to write a governmental document? Yep. All right, roll constitution. The players. <laughs> this is beautiful. You signed up for D&D and you don't like punts? Shame on you. Name a standard magic item, but give it a defect also, which is why it is on sale. Used bag of holding. Everything comes out covered in glitter. A sentient sword of evil's bane. It decides what's evil or not. <laughs> This is just reality. This is just how people work in general. A ring of sea invisibility, but while wearing it, you can only see invisible things. Ring of spell storing. Created by a wild magic sorcerer, so you roll on the wild magic table whenever you use the spells in it. Wand of magic missiles, but with 15 feet range. <laughs> A crown that increases your intelligence, but lowers your common sense. Oh, that is so fun. This would essentially turn you into like a bookworm who's really smart and can read really fast and has a lot of factual knowledge, but their street smart is like through the ground. A bag of holding, except the extra dimensional space is shared with about a dozen other bags of holding in unknown locations. Stuff you put in there can be taken out by someone else. Someone on another end has started using the bag as a place to dispose of waste. No! Oh, that's so sad. This can also be a good thing. You remember those notes you used to hand to each other in school, like when you shared a desk and someone else had the same desk that you had, but in a different class so you could have a note like underneath the desk. It was like, hey there, stranger, sharing the same desk as me. You could do that. But with bags of holding, this is so good. This can turn into like a like a whole Tinder experience, but in D and D. That's another adventure I want to do. Like like a dating app in D and D. Wouldn't that be super fun? Oh my god, that would be so much fun. It's like a side quest, a whole company in the village. You just go there and be like, oh, you're gonna do matchmaking stuff. And then you can choose how to do it. If you're a barbarian, just threaten people into dating each other with violence. If you're like, a, I don't know, a magician, you just do mind control stuff and so on and so forth. If you're a shapeshifter, you just, you just wingman them and that kind of stuff. Or you shapeshift into a dog and you do the leash around the legs kind of thing. This would be so beautiful. This would be so beautiful. Fantasy dating wingman. Oh my god, I need to turn this into a campaign. A sentient sword, but it feels pain and is very vocal about it. <laughs> Ow! You swung me at a breastplate, you bastard! <laughs> uh, hit them harder with me, daddy. No, stop. Stop. Normal people when they see a sparrow. Ah, oh, cool bird. My DMs, town guards, when they see a sparrow. Oh my god, it's a national security threat! We need to get rid of this thing immediately! Time to die, you seed-eating bastard! <laughs> That is basically what it is when you try to sneak into a town. <laughs> there are no other birds. Oh, maybe it's the same kind of scene as with the tree. It's just like, hey, this city is in the middle of a desert or something. There are no birds here. And there's just one single bird, obviously. It's a shape-shifting spy. Wizards of the Coast Guide to Making a New Race. Step one, choose a real animal. Step two, make them humanoid. Step three, profit. Oh, look at those little creatures. This is just furry island, not chill, isn't it? I don't know what that is. Next meme. Probably bad RPG ideas. The players are all told to create mid-level druids with animal companions. After creating their characters, all have their druids be kidnapped and the players must rescue them as their animal companions. OP, change your URL! That is an adorable adventure. Oh my, it's just a team of puppies and kittens and stuff trying to save the druids. I want to do this campaign too. I don't have enough free time to do all these campaign ideas. Stop. That one guy that insists their character sleeps in full plate just so they aren't naked doing the ambush. Well, that's how it is, though. That's how it do be. 
Oh, I think a better thing is just to play as a character as always naked, so you have no disadvantage, whatever you're wearing, or what you aren't wearing. <laughs> that is amazing. I once played as like a gladiator-inspired dwarf, and the whole concept was it was basically like the Hulk, super strong and agile and everything, but so incredibly socially incompetent. We had a couple of homebrew rules that meant that my character couldn't charm anyone, like literally couldn't roll on charms because it was so socially inept, but could also not get charmed. So I remember at some point in the adventure we met like sirens or something like that trying to charm the whole party and my character was just sitting there like what i don't understand what's going on <laughs> just completely immune to the whole charm thing it was absolutely beautiful turn your weakness into strength hashtag wholesome message of the day dragonborn barbarian come at me you big bully dm dragon's fire engulfs you for 64 damage Ugh, my turn <gasps> But you only deal 2D. DM slams table! You feel the blood of your ancestors boil into a white hot jet of fiery justice? Roll 26d6 true fire damage! <laughs> you did 726 damage! Woo! Because coolness always beats realism, am I right? We're in a fantasy world, who the hell needs realism? If I wanted realism, I would do my tax returns, thank you. Play D&D. No. It's got magic. Eh, you get to hang out with your friends. Okay, fine. Now it's all you think about. Ah, you fucker. But it's so good, though. It's so good, though. It's beautiful. We had a pretty nice adventure recently where the whole thing took place on a boat. So it was very much like Zelda Wind Waker kind of style, but the boat was like a party boat. But the whole thing just turned out to be like consistent orgies on this boat because the travel took quite a long time and we were like fixing rations and that kind of thing. So I was a bard and I just played tracks while everyone else was orgying. That was like 90% of the adventure and people were just rolling d20s to like to tell how good the orgy was. And then our then our dungeon master got a bit too drunk and we couldn't continue sadly. Levels of pain, slap, childbirth, kicked in the balls. Campaign ends because DM doesn't feel like it. Then you just have to have a stand in DM. You just like keep going with the adventure. You just ride it on a whim. Dungeons and Dragons is the most powerful tabletop game with Americans because it allows them to fulfill their wildest fantasies, like speaking multiple languages and being able to make a living while freelancing. <laughs> and take that, Americans. Subscribe if you're American. Thank you. Enjoy the D&D renaissance. It wasn't always like this. When I was a teenager, everyone was sneaking out to go party. Meanwhile, I was sneaking out to play D&D. My mom once found a D10 in my pocket and she was like, ah, What's this? Like it was a joint. <laughs> oh my god, it's like the satanic panic with D&D. What is this? Huh? Is this drugs? Why is there a duck in it? Oh my god, disgusting. This is crack. D20? Oh, is that a code word for cocaine? Bard, what if I did a vicious mockery, and based on how hurtful it is, you tell me what dice to roll? Um, sure, I'll allow it. You are none of your best friend's best friend. DM. Party. So, why do I- He's dead. Oh, great, everyone make a whiz save. <laughs> that is such a good insult, though. It's such a good insult. Me every three minutes while watching D&D &D Honor Among Thieves. Ah, oh, I know that thing, I know it. I know, right? That was that was so me while watching the movie. I actually liked it. Like, it's not super special in terms of fantasy movies nowadays, but I feel like the people who directed it actually bothered checking up on what D&D actually is. I mean, of course, there are some stuff that is adjusted just because so it works in movie format. You know, tabletop versus movies has a bit of a different flow to it. But I still think they did it really well. It really feels like a quirky party of friends who's just like going through an improvised adventure. It's pretty nice. During the fight scenes, each character went one after another like they were taking turns. The final fight scene showed this the best. I did chuckle at the baby rust monsters fighting over a lock. This is small and maybe not my favorite per se, but I love that the big arena was made out of 5x5 square blocks. They literally set up the thing on a battle map and had the wealthy gamblers playing some game above them. Yeah, it had some details that you like snip it up. It kinda, it's kinda nice. I kinda liked it. It's very entertaining. The DM. The party. How should we solve this problem? Social encounter. Hmm. That's right. Violence. <laughs> Sops. <laughs> this is such a good use of this meme. It really did be like that. Oh my god. It's either, it's either seduction or violence. Sometimes maybe a bit of both depending. Oh god, that sounds really bad, doesn't it? <laughs> Seductive violence. Turns out the barkeep is a bit of a masochist. How do you seduce him? <laughs> Barbarian, please. 
A new campaign has started! There are taxes and repair fees for everything the party has destroyed! They are wanted for not paying any of it. Uh, Fantasy IRS is on them, showing up everywhere they go. Fantasy IRS outsources their case to League of Lawful Evil Rogues. Entire party ends up drugs and unconscious next time they go drinking. They wake up with no money, no equipment, and nothing but their underwear in a bathtub full of ice with permanent negative modifiers! <laughs> That is so horrifying. I would imagine the adventure to be like the next party. The next campaign you do with the same party is just hunting down your previous characters for not paying their damage. I need to do that. I need to do that. That'll be so much fun. Oh my god, yes. The whole party fails their investigation into mysterious happenings around the noble. The barbarian with disadvantage being the only one who passes the checks. <gasps> I see color so clearly now. And yeah, sometimes it do be like that, doesn't it? Or when you're gonna break down a door and the barbarian just rolls a critical one, and then like the skinny little wizard boy that runs around in the hoodie and weighs like 30 pounds, it's like, oh, I rolled a 20. <laughs> Damn it. When learning D&D for the first time, I remember my DM telling me the limits of a nat 20, followed by an example of how he didn't limit it before. You stand before an all-knowing god. Um, I lied to him. Uh, uh, uh roll for deception. Not 20. Uh, he believes it! You see? That's the, that's the controversy. That's the controversy. Is a nat 20 like a perfect crit that will get you past any situation, no matter the context? Or is it like within limitation? Like, for example, if you have an all-knowing god, you cannot convince him no matter how charismatic or how much you nailed the conversation because it's literally not possible. He already knows the answer. Let me know in the comments. It kind of depends on the party. Like, if you're doing a try-hard game where you really want to follow the rules, I would say that it, it's within realism. But if you play like one of the wacky parties, like... Like I always do, it's more interesting to do the nat 20 is like a perfect thing. Oh, we go to the king to get our first quest. I, I, I roll persuasion to make me the new king instead. Oh, nat 20? I'm the, <laughs> I'm the king now. He just gives me the crown. <laughs> Girls playing D&D? Uh, let's pretend to be the heroes of our own stories. Uh, oh, sounds fun. Uh, boys playing D&D? Let's pretend to be the heroes of our own stories. Uh, sounds fun. You see, having fun does not have a gender. Oh, yes, indeed. DM. The villain strikes you down, laughing as your attacks bounces off his armor. It was forged from scales of falling great worm, he claims. No mortal magic can penetrate it. Ah, oh, I have to cast Wish. To, to kill him? To teleport yourself to safety? No, I reach out, touch his armor, and cast Resurrection. Oh, no. <laughs> Rogues when the new party member is another rogue. <laughs> Am I not enough? Barbarians when the new party member is another barbarian. Ape together strong. <laughs> <laughs> the DM, you find the crystal heart of the fallen god. It burns to touch and when near it you feel warm. The party realizes we have an infinite source of heat. Mm, soup. I will just create like some kind of infinite engine and with that you can just generate infinite amounts of cash if you're a bit, uh, if you're a bit smart about it. I want to do this. Ew, it's hard work dungeon chopping. I need a stamina potion. Blink blonk. Gosh darn, it's stuck. Okay, come here, little rascal. Hee hee hee, oh boy. Nice try, Frank. Ah, oh, come on, man. Aw, oh, Frank, you little, you little silly kinky mimic. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's another interesting side quest. Can I can I construct next to, like, the, the dating wingman assistant quest line, there is another house that is just a brothel with, like, kinky mimics. I need to construct this D&D town that's just completely unhinged. This is gonna be so good. I'll do anything you want for $50. My players need a healer. Get in and I'll tell you about my setting while you read the player's handbook. Seems legit. Yeah, I, I, I think this should be a thing. You know, it's just <laughs> D&D players for hire. <laughs> it says here that they banned stone toss memes. But I like stone toss memes. But you could just use sword comic memes. Nobody likes sword comic memes. I love sword comic memes. They're beautiful. Thank you. Hmm. The first, we have to make you a character. Pick a race. Hmm. You mean like, like Asian? Hmm. <laughs> What's your race? Swedish. All right, just a little paladin walking along, picking up a little book of spell stuff. Oh, yes, indeed, getting increasingly more sassy. And the caption to this is just, My paladin's experience multi-classing into warlock. So you just get more, like, femboyified and sassy. I kind of want to play a character like this. This sounds really good in many ways. Reminder that most of H.P. Lovecraft's stories are set in or near Massachusetts, so you should be mentally giving all the characters Boston accents. Oh my god, it's an eldritch horror from beyond the stars. <laughs>
I would love to just spice up all the accents in a D&D adventure. Imagine a bunch of dwarves that aren't Scottish, but they're like Texans instead. Oh, damn, Cletus, we've been digging them holes real good. Yeehaw, boy. <laughs> When the conjured creature doesn't perfectly match the terrain, but the DM wants to see what happens next. Here's your little orca in the street, that's so beautiful. I love that kind of stuff though, when you just make everything go completely bananas, it's so good. Rogues solving murders. Hmm. Cleric solving murders. Welcome back, who killed you? My player solving murders. Well, of course I know him. He's me. Oh, mystery solved. Excellent. Yeah, sometimes with my party, I'm starting to wonder if there is, like, no point to really create a questline, but create, like, a limited map instead that's more of a sandbox. Like, imagine all those buildings and guilds I have suggested throughout this video. You just make a limited map or an island, for example, where you have all these places. So depending on which direction the players waddles off to, you just kind of half improvise it, so you have, like, rough questlines or rough dynamics figured out for each of the guilds and that kind of stuff, but the rest is just kind of improvised depending on the actions. I think that could be kind of good, depending on the party you have unless you're following like a larger consistent storyline. I kind of want to try to do that. Just be like, hey boys, just so you know that there wasn't a quest line in, in, the, in this at all. I just let you sandbox the crap out of this. Nothing was planned. <laughs> I kind of want to do that. I think I'll do that for my next adventure. Just have a bunch of quirky houses like the wingman place, the, the kinky mimics, all this kind of stuff and just see where they go. That is so good. I'm going to do this. I'll tell you how it goes. Probably horribly. As the bandits approach, the leader gives a wild grin, revealing a mouth full of gold teeth. He begins to speak, saying, Ah, looks like we got some fresh... Druid, I cast heat metal. DM. <laughs> oh, that's so awful. Oh my god, it's gurgling melted metal. Oh god. Introducing a new alignment, chaotic lawful. I have a strict moral code, but nobody can figure out what the hell it is. Not to be confused with Lawful Chaotic, which is creating as much chaos as possible by following the letter of the law, usually to ridiculous extremes. This is so good, this is like chaotic evil undercover. Oh, I love this. The Sword of Summoning Ducks Uncommon, 1d6 slashing damage. This sword has three charges. As an action, you can expend one charge to summon a d6 of ducks, regains three charges per day. I need to do this! I need to- oh my god, sword? And duck, it's just like, everything, oh, yes, can it be a d20 duck? Can I compromise this, just to have as many ducks as possible? I kind of want that. Hey, girl, I couldn't help but notice that you're trying to steal my mug. So, can I say you are mugging me? Ah. She was really into that, I am telling you. Valoros, she broke your leg, your arm, and stole your mug. Well, I, I think she likes me, though. <laughs> They're only bullying you because they like you. They only mugged you and stole your kidney because they like you. You see, there are two types of people when it comes to puns. One of them will laugh along and think that you're worthy of their time. The other ones will steal your kidney. Me! Wanna hear about my new player character idea? Uh, sure. He is a Warforged bard named Gender. Wait, what does that mean? Gender is a social construct. Oh, and here's your picture of gender, the social construct. But don't. I do appreciate myself a good pun, thank you. Absurd trolley problems, D&D edition. Oh no, a trolley is heading towards your party. You can pull the lever to divert it onto the other track five feet away, destroying the staff of the magi instead. But that's a really shiny magic item. What do you do? You know, you can always make new characters, but you cannot make a new shiny magic item. I mean, maybe you can, but this not this one. Not this one. Kill the party members. Thank you, friends overrated. Being an elf and watching the rest of the party sleep. <sighs> I still... <laughs> the mic responds to my... <laughs> this dude wants to play as a girl! See? No one cares. Anyone else feel weird about this? Or am I just weird about it? Roll for pride! No, it's not strange at all. It's not weird at all. Uh, knock yourself out. In a good way. Dice prison for bad dice that roll bad rolls. Does this facility actually rehabilitate the dice so they can be successfully reintegrated into society? Or does it simply punish them in a way that further removes them from good rolling habits and leads them down a road of crit fails after crit fail, eventually returning them to the penal system? Uh, literally dice. <laughs> I think someone laughed far in the back.
Something about Netflix Castlevania felt really weird but oddly familiar in the way that the story is medieval low fantasy, and yet every character is not only speaking in a super modern way, but constantly dunking on each other's backstories, dropping f-bombs with impunity, and going on five-minute tangents on whether or not vampires really are killed by running water, and I couldn't put my finger on it until I realized they all talk like their players in a D&D campaign. One! Ah, oh, you must be the Belmont. <laughs> It's so true! It's so true! I just think they kind of sound like like a trash-talking lobby online. You know, like, a spoiler alert, by the way, when they encounter death towards the end of it? And it, it really sounds like a talking like freaking freaking online lobby. I will skull frick your girlfriend and other your mother! It's beautiful. It's beautiful. None of that honorable, fine, fancy, ye olden English. It's just, it's just rage game lobbies. DM. So you started that sentence with, I wish. Oh, oh no! The ring of three wishes starts to glow. Oh no! What was that other word you used in the same sentence? Huh? Literally? I have waited 15 years for this. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that is so evil. That is so evil. I like it. just waiting for the key phrase to be said. I wish just something something and literally that happens. I need to do this. I need to do this. I am not saying you're fat, but when I cast Levitate, you're somehow immune. This is just the Castlevania stuff all over again. My poor achy-wakey heart. Me, DM. Okay, just checking in. Everyone is good for tonight's session, right? The group. I'm in Weldon Spring. I'm in Yevle. I'm in the abandoned city of Pripyat. <laughs> I'm inside one of the Inchin Down oil tanks. I'm off to the Arctic for three weeks. I am not inside a fusion reactor. I'm in Hull. <laughs> I'm at Disney World. This I'm is in this like this. I am in an unpowered glider. I'm in <laughs> I'm flying a few thousand feet over Lincolnshire. I'm at platform nine and three quarters. I am under the English Channel. I am still in the Arctic. I'm on top of the <laughs> hill. I am in Baton Rouge. I am squinting into the sun. I'm in in Swindon. I am about to cross a road. I'm in <coughs> Bristol. I'm on my way back from the Arctic. I'm at space camp. I'm putting myself at risk of being sued. <coughs> I'm at party. I'm at the Eureka weather station. I am with Norm. I am back with Norm. Last time I was outside this pub with Norm, he taught me how to strangle someone. I am back in the UK and I have a cold. This is so beautiful. This is so beautiful. It's exactly like this. It's exactly like this. Oh my god, I can just caption this trying to play D&D &D when you're 30 plus and everyone is busy with relationships and life and work and that kind of stuff. It's like, oh yeah fam, how's your schedule, you know, next August? Great. Well, laddies, lasses, and lasses, I do hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And make sure to look out for the little keychain plushies. They're very cute. Look how tiny they are. They're like bobbies. It's amazing. You can even take the keychain part off and just, like, have them in your pocket. Look at this. It's so cute. You see this? You can bring it with you wherever you go and just, like, mwah. It's so good. Anyway, I hope to see you in the very near future. Take care, you beautiful bean. Mwah. Yeah!